Hey, welcome to another episode of Disney Dust. It's Disney Dwayne here. And as you can see, we are ready to talk about Turning Red, Pixar's latest offering. Uh, and it's gone direct to Disney Plus. I was really hoping to see this in the cinema, but it's gone direct to Disney Plus. But the good thing is that it is absolutely free. I did not expect that either. Uh, also, um, at this point, Pixar's in the news for other things. Uh, a group of LGBTQ employees, uh, unidentified, they have stepped up to sort of complain about how Disney has not taken a stance uh, with the Don't Say Bill. And I'll get into that a little bit more towards the end of this episode. So it's a tie-up episode, um, which has a lot of people turning red as well. <laughs> okay, anyway, so um, I wondered if this movie would appeal to my humor. That was the first thing I wanted to... I thought of because basically the world is in a pretty sad state at the moment and you know uh, i just wanted to laugh and the, the the movie that makes me laugh the most really that is right down my alley for humor is empress new groove and uh, this one actually um isn't as funny but it ranks very high up there uh, and i was pleasantly surprised um it does have the same thing going as cw's current kung fu series where a historical family secret involves some magic and it affects the women only coincidence i don't know like an asian tale and then this sort of asian sort of historical magic thing happening um yeah just just that part just made me feel like um made me feel like it was not original in a sense but in any case this is written by bao's creator bao is the short that was created by disney as well uh dom domi shi uh, and it's also by playwright Julia Cho. I was very surprised to see her name. I, she's not she's not like completely popular, but I know of her because when I was studying musical theater and theater in the States in New York, uh, her name popped up um, on the scripts that I was researching to do as an Asian person. So I was very happy. I'm very happy to see that um, a lot more Asians are stepping forward writing these tales. And this has come after Ryan the Last Dragon. So just just great how much representation is out there. Uh, this is set in a time, I think, where boy bands were the thing you can see in the dressing and sense. Um, and I, I thought they were going to be using covers for this whole movie because in the trailer, they used uh, NSYNC's It's Gonna Be Me. Um, and because they say it's gonna be May, I think they chose it because our lead character's name is May. Uh, and I think they just thought it was appropriate, but it doesn't feature in the movie, strangely. So it threw me off. Um, but this movie i believe is um full of originals i think and these originals were great catchy boy band numbers uh i you know would have thought they, they they came from that time but i think it was written for this movie i may be wrong i didn't do my research there but really catchy tunes in fact i want to go back and listen to some more of them i think uh uh if they are originals they have a you know uh they yeah they re recapture the boy band flavor very well um the only unoriginal song that i heard was uh Bootalicious, so that was Beyonce singing it. Um, there are many, many great moments. This this pushes some boundaries in terms of it being naughty. I mean, you see the whole, um, the look of, you know, when they, when they see something cute, these girls, they have these big eyes and it's very Japanese anime almost. And it was strange to see in a Pixar movie, but you know, it, it's, sort of, it, it's sort of a nod to Asian culture, um, which is nice. Uh, there was also a moment where May was, you think she was about to climb into bed with a, a picture of an idol and she's about to do something really naughty. Uh, of course she doesn't, but that was, I was like, wow, this film is pushing some boundaries, um, you know. And as a Chinese person myself, I also appreciated how there were expressions, um, which the subtitles didn't actually spell out. I mean, they basically, the subtitles basically had an English translation um, of an English show. Uh, so things like ayo, which is what Asians and Chinese like to say, ayo, uh, I heard twice actually in the movie, uh, played by Sandra Oh, uh, the mother, uh, I think she says it once. Oh, Sandra is just amazing in this film. She is so, um, she just makes me laugh. She's great. Yeah, that's all I have to say. And there was a moment where someone goes, uh, ayo, say ya. Say ya means, oh my gosh, die, die. We're dead, we're dead. Um, <laughs> which is also just came out of nowhere for me. And I, I found I was very tickled by it. Um, the aunties, you know, her, her aunties are a troop to look out for. They are endearing, comical, and, you know, they add a hoot. They're such a hoot. Um, and then of course, unfortunately, the male characters in this movie um, don't stand out, which is unfortunate because I feel male characters don't have to be downplayed in order for female characters to shine. 
um, it's about time they have, you know, both genders shine. Why do male characters have to be dumb or, you know, underplayed in order for females to shine? It doesn't make sense, right? So celebrate your men too, women writers, when you write the men in, celebrate them too. Um, we are after all, you know, uh, for equality, right? Um, that poor dad, you know, when the mom could choose between spending time with the dad or the daughter, May, um, it seemed like a no brainer for the mom to choose May. It was very sad. And that relationship, that broken almost relationship that the um, movie seems to suggest uh, was definitely not explored or patched up by the end of the movie. So I'm not going to get into any spoilers. These are just little things that I've noticed. They're not really spoilers. Um, I'll leave you to watch the movie itself. It is pretty amazing. Uh, I have to give it a four, yeah, out of five. Um, I would give it a highest score, but you know, there were some things about um, how I said it, it kind of paralleled Kung Fu a bit and how the males were not represented so well. But yeah, so on to the other topic of um, what's happening right now. So basically, um, parents' rights in education, uh, the parents' rights in education bill is now uh, also kind of dubbed as the don't say gay bill because some of the clauses in it um, include basically it basically bans educators from discussions about sexual orientation and gender identity in classrooms. Uh, so a student with two dads, for example, uh, would not be able to talk about his two dads or her two dads. Um, and basically, that's not creating a safe space in school. So it is a concern. And so an unidentified group of Pixar em employees, LGBTQ Pixar employees, um, are upset with their parent company, Disney, and they, they issued a letter and a statement out um, in some ways with specific regard to CEO Bob Chapek, uh, who has been silent about the matter. But, but Chapek has recently issued a statement uh, of apology saying that it is clear that this is not just about a bill in Florida, but it has, uh, but he actually broadened, broadened it to being a challenge to basic human rights instead. So he's kind of diverting. I think it's a bit of a cop out in terms of answering the question. He's sort of made it a bigger issue. Um, so anyway, the group, the group says, the LGBT group uh, of Pixar employees, they say that nearly every moment of overtly gay affection is cut at Disney's behest, regardless of when there is a protest from both the creative teams and executive leadership at Pixar. Um, so that is of concern. However, I mean, if you if you look at, um, you know, other the, the big picture, I, I, I also feel like um, there have been some depictions, maybe not enough, but we'll get to those depictions in a bit. But first, um, um, I would just like to share that in my own observation, it could be um, Little Town, I think that was what it was called. It was this new like prequel series that was happening about Gaston, Gaston and LeFou. Um, and of course, LeFou is um, openly gay uh, in the live action version. And so if they were to do that version, the prequel, um, then then there would be a lot more gay matter, I guess. And so maybe maybe that was one of the things that was cut. Um, Pixar so far has only depicted. Um, so let's look at their history all right, of, of depiction uh, of one explicitly LGBTQ character, and it's in the feature length film uh, in the uh, onward where the police officer named Spectre is in it. Other films such as Luca, for example, while well, they've had some, you know, representation or some lean or suggestions of it, uh, if you if you read into it, um, but it still lacks basically a meaningful a meaningfully depicted LGBTQ experience and characters, right? Uh, they have done Out, which is a short film, which appears on Disney Plus. So actually that is something that counts. It's not like everything was canceled, right? Um, uh, Luca, like I said, um, has a bit of that. It's sort of, uh, you know, suggested it could go direct that direction. In fact, Turning Red could also head in that direction if you take the panda changing as a metaphor for being gay. Um, but, you know, it's still not outright um, a gay character. However, uh, Luff is interesting to note that in on Disney Plus, Star, um, which the U.S. doesn't get, Love, Victor, uh, which is now in Hulu, um, which is owned by Disney, is also in Star, which is under the Disney Plus streaming service internationally. And so Love, Victor is definitely about two gay, you know, a main gay character. And, you know, two, I'm saying because of the boyfriend and other boyfriends that he's had. So... 
honestly, I feel like Disney has represented um, the gay community. It's not like everything is completely cut. Um, and also there's an upcoming uh, movie, and I think it's animated, uh, called Better Nate Than Ever, and it's based on a children's book series. Um, it's about a 13 year old boy who dreams to be on Broadway, but can't even land in his middle school musical. So I think there's a lot coming and for there to be um, a feature like movie by Disney about a gay character um, animated that that is that is something. So we'll we'll just see what are your thoughts about it, please feel free to let me know in the comments below. Uh, I know I've rambled on a bit this is more than my typical episode but interesting discussion I'd like to hear from you and what you thought about it. So um, be sure to leave a comment. Also, be sure to like this video if you did, uh, give it a thumbs up and uh, hit that bell notification for other notifications of other reviews and videos and subscribe to the channel, of course. Till the next time, bye.